The U.S. Mint produced the first Washington Quarters in 1932, containing 90% silver for decades. Since coins minted during Wutu were also made of precious metal, you can expect the 1945 quarter value to be significant. The best is that you don't need to be a collector to find value for these pieces. Thanks to a high silver percentage, early quarters are an excellent way to invest your money for the future time that comes. The first silver American quarters appeared in 1796, and they lasted until 1964 when the U.S. Mint decided to replace them with cupronical coins. This unpopular decision was due to increased prices in the precious metal market. Washington quarter minting in 1932 was one of the ways to celebrate the first president's 200th birth anniversary. Interestingly, there was no production of coins with this denomination in the previous and following years. In 1934, the minting was stabilized and has continued until today. The 1945 silver Washington quarters were minted in a specific year when World War II was finally finished. After returning American troops, it was crucial to adjust the economy to new peacetime conditions. That was one of the reasons for the slightly lower mintage than in the previous year. You can notice significant sale price variations even among quarters of the same grade. The reasons for such a reality are numerous. In most cases, prices depend on the coins themselves, including their quality, rarity, and place of minting. But you should also be aware of the sailing place's importance. For instance, prices at auctions are often higher than estimation values and sums of money reached on eBay or pawn shops. At such places, the coin value is only a part of the reason, and it is more often about competition and the desire to win the auction. The Washington Quarters replaced the Standing Liberty Quarters in 1932. Interestingly, there are no coins with this denomination minted in 1930 and 1933. All coins produced by 1965, including 1945 quarters, were made of 0 0.900 silver. Officials decided to honor George Washington by placing his profile on the obverse. They chose a quarter for that purpose, replacing hard-to-mint standing liberty quarters. The decision was made despite this honorable president's disdain for such a practice that was a standard for British coinage. John Flanagan took the job seriously and depicted the first U.S. president's left profile. He paid particular attention to details and faithfully showed his authentic hairstyle, including the signature ponytail tied with a bow. Interestingly, the artist based this image on his own sculpture. However, he made some changes, particularly in the hairstyle. Then he added inscriptions required by federal law, including liberty. This word excellently describes the American nation's aspirations, making it unavoidable on all metal coinage since the Coinage Act of 1792 was passed, 1945. In most cases, you can see the minting date placed along the bottom coin rim, which was also the case with these quarters. J.F. The designer incorporated his initials into a neck truncation, following the tradition of adding them to honor authors. Unlike the relatively simple coin of verse, the designer made the reverse too complicated. He planned to add all the necessary symbols crucial for the nation, but the result was somehow cluttered look. A bald eagle is one of the oldest American symbols, representing freedom, courage, strength, and immortality. It spreads wings while standing on a bundle of arrows, symbolizing the nation's power and readiness for war. As a balance, there are two olive branches with tied ends as a generally accepted symbol of peace. The surrounding inscriptions include United States of America. Each American coin includes the name of the country where it is used in everyday transactions, e pluribus unum. This Latin phrase symbolizes the unity of many states that decided to unite and create one powerful country. Quarter dollar. This denomination is struck along the coin's bottom rim, showing this coin is worth 25 cents. The S or D mint mark, unlike pieces struck in Philadelphia that came without the P mint mark in 1945, the other two mints issued quarters with a tiny letter. Its place is under the olive twigs about two-thirds of Washington quarters minted in 1945 of a total mintage of 103,717,601 coins came from Philadelphia. 
The rest of the coins were produced in the other two mints. Be prepared that no proof coins were minted from 1942 to 1950, so all quarters from the last war year were from regular strikes. 1955. Wheat Penny Value Guides. Rare Errors. D. S. And No Mint Mark. Three mints produced the collectible and highly recognizable 1955 Lincoln Cent, like many similar minted from 1909 to 1958. All those are famous for President Lincoln's profile on the obverse and two wheat stalks on the reverse. The 1955 wheat penny value depends on the condition and mint mark. As expected, experienced collectors want to buy a famous and rare double die error struck this year. At the same time, Beginners start with a basic collection that always includes three specimens from the regular strike. The obverse of the 1955 Lincoln Wheat Penny. The 1955 Lincoln Wheat Penny contains Abraham Lincoln's image facing right in the central position on the obverse. The simple design includes the word Liberty near the left coin rim and the inscription in God We Trust above the 16th U.S. President's head. In front of his bust are the date and appropriate mint mark, depending on the mint producing the particular coin. Those from Philadelphia always come without the mint mark. Finally, you can notice VDB letters on the bust's shoulder truncation, representing the designer's initials. The reverse of the 1955 Lincoln Wheat Penny. Like other Lincoln Wheat Pennies, those minted in 1955 come with a subtle design that includes two wheat ears stretching along the rim. They surround the denomination written in sizable fonts, while the inscription, United States of America, was divided into two lines. The tiny Latin motto, E Pluribus Unum, is placed along the top edge. 1955. Lincoln Wheat Penny Value. You can buy most coins in the highest grade for a few cents to $1.10, while beautiful pieces with desirable red toning can reach $1.35. Even the best specimen will cost you up to $1.700. The most expensive penny produced in Philadelphia this year was paid $8,625 at an auction in 2006. Do you possess a worn-out nickel similar to this one? If you can believe it, this coin sold for $1,980. In this video, I'll explain why it happened, what to look for on your coin, and how to sell it if you find one. This is a 1943 S5 cent Jefferson nickel, okay? It's crucial to note that the S mint mark may be seen in the top center of the coin's reverse. Usually, coins have a smaller mint stamp than this. But the important thing to remember is that the S mint mark denotes the San Francisco mint. It was made into this coin. This coin has now been graded by, with the entire steps on the back. NGC rates it as an AU55. Let me quickly break that down for you. Therefore, 70 is the highest possible grade. This piece had a grade of 55, practically uncirculated, indicating that it was probably discovered in circulation as pocket change. So, gentlemen, these coins are available. Now, if this coin had received a higher grade, it would have sold for much more than $1,980. Additionally, the reverse of item has all the stages. That implies, as stated above, there, which is much shallower, are the entire steps. Because it is so ornate and detailed, it might be difficult to strike properly during the minting process. It is also the highest point, on the coin, so it wears out most quickly during circulation. Collectors enjoy seeing that, therefore. But keep in mind that it only really matters on example coins of high grade. Why then did this coin sell for such a high price? The major reason is that this coin was mistakenly struck, in case you hadn't previously noticed. It has all the stages on the back. A fragrance coin made of steel and zinc. Thus, 1943 marked a transitional year for the U.S. Mint, which was using zinc-coated steel coins in place of bronze penny coins while saving the bronze for ammunition. This coin was unintentionally used in the wrong hopper, which led to it being struck as a Jefferson nickel. Now you can quickly determine if you possess one of these coins by either weighing it or simply examining its size. Because it is a steel fragrance penny blank, you can see that this coin isn't much smaller. Keep an eye out for it if you have one because it can be quite valuable. The best method to sell a coin like this, in my opinion, is to ask at least three different people for their opinions before you sell it. Getting rated as this person did would be worthwhile. If your neighborhood coin store is a dealer with NGC or PCJS, they might be able to assist you with that. Do keep in mind that these coins are extremely rare and valuable. Keep in mind that this coin sold for $1,980, therefore do not spend it. You will undoubtedly appreciate the video on the screen if you like this one. Toggle that.
Guys, how are you doing? I want to show you this mistake, Dime. The year is 1968 and the time is roughly in unused condition. Coin with a strong meat scent that was briefly in circulation. Mark D on luster meat designates timber meat as the issuer. Except for the number 8, the Weiselmans are often well struck. Is little deformed. Polish lines on heels are prominent and distracting. Is the dye chip on the nose rather substantial? Please note that I am not an expert on dye errors, so if you are, please feel free to enlighten us as to what this specific form of fault is called. Strike displays intricately detailed device parts in the comment box below this video. There is a lot of variety that resembles entire bands. I examined it very carefully and bands split into upper and lower ones. I believe that in 1968, Denver saw the striking of more than 480 million Roosevelt towns. At circulated grades, there are lots of them. At uncirculated grades with full bands on the torch, 1968 time deteriorates more than its face value. They are valued at $1.22 at stage 66 midpoint, both at mid-stay $68,800 dollars In 2021, an eBay auction resulted in the sale of the finest example from mid-stay 68. It eventually sold for $14,195. Other than business strike, there is just one uncommon proof. 1968 dime version that fetches high prices at auctions. The estimation mark, which stands for San Francisco Made, is absent from the earliest proof coins that the United States has produced. It is an exceptionally rare coin, because there are just a few thousand copies known in all grades combined. Among non-cameo proof Tencents, this is one of the best No S. Roosevelt times. Very attractive gem that is nearly flawless in every regard. Today, that is a very real reality. It ultimately sold at Legend Rare Coin Auctions for $29,375. Many thousands of dollars worth of gold coins, I'm going to discuss some extremely rare Sakajawea dollar coins in this video that sold for a ton of money and that you should keep an eye out for right away. It's crucial to understand that contrary to popular belief, these Sakajawea coins are not struck with gold. They appear golden because they are actually copper coins with a brass outer coating. The coin you are currently viewing on the screen was sold for $84,000. Guys, that's correct, NGC gave it a grade. It is rated at an AU58 by a third-party grading agency. Nearly uncirculated is referred to as AU. Now, the reason I received an AU grade is that there is several coin gashes from mingling. Because of this, the state of your coin has a significant impact on its worth. Make sure you are protecting and not destroying any rare coins you may have. Now, the fact that this coin is referred to be a mule coin explains why it is so uncommon. We all now understand what a mule is. The reason the is because it combines two animals that shouldn't mix, a donkey and a horse. This coin has a Sakagawea dollar on one side and a presidential dollar on the other. I'm not sure exactly how this happened throughout the minting procedure. This could have been done on purpose by a mint employee. Who knows for sure? In the end, it's difficult to trust some people online. Nevertheless, if you came find a coin like this, you would be in for a treat because this one went for $84,000 at an auction, and this Sacagawea dollar cost $144,000. Now everything seems normal when viewed from the rear of the Sacagawea dollar. Here, Sediments 865 Plus was used to produce this one by PCJS. Now the plus grade label will significantly raise the coin's worth there, but this is all dependent on the coin's current higher grading. This coin is a mule just like the preceding one, but its front features a statehood quarter, therefore these two should be compared. Never mix the two. The majority of the time, unless they are in exceptionally good graded condition, your Julia dollar coins will only be worth a few bucks. Also keep in mind that this will be attempted to be duplicated by others. Whether it involves cutting a coin in half, pasting the halves together, or welding the halves together, coloring the resulting coin to make it look to be a genuine error, you may make a lot of money online by selling the mistake. That is why independent businesses like NGC and PCGs are crucial to the hobby. You must ensure that you hold on to it securely and do not lose it if you locate one, ripped off and conned. The Currency Mastermind class is about to start. I'll see you inside when you click the link below to get on the waiting list. The nickels struck in the 1960s were known as Jefferson Nickels. Individual coins can vary hugely in value. So just how much could a top quality coin be worth? 
That's what we're going to find out. We'll explore one particular mintage, the 1965 nickel value. We'll dig into what separates a standard coin from something that's rare and valuable. And we'll take a look at the history and design of the Jefferson nickel along the way. Ready to find out more? Then let's get started. 1965 marks the first date of the series known to coin collectors as the modern original design, Jefferson nickel. Earlier nickels are known as vintage, but there's no real difference between them. The distinction simply ties in with the date when the Treasury removed silver from dimes, quarters, and half dollars. The 1965 nickel has the same design on both sides as the earliest Jefferson nickels, which were struck in 1938. The coins get their nickname from the obverse, which carries the portrait of the former president, Thomas Jefferson. The Jefferson nickel was a replacement for the coin known as the Buffalo nickel. That had proven difficult to strike successfully and was retired after 25 years. That was the earliest the mint could cease producing a coin design without seeking congressional approval. The new nickel was designed by a German-born sculptor by the name of Felix Schlag. Schlag had served in the German army in the First World War, but emigrated to the USA in 1929. The first Jefferson Nichols didn't have Schlag's signature. This was unusual, and in 1966, the U.S. Mint gave the artist the opportunity to remedy the situation. His initials were placed on the obverse, at the base of Jefferson's portrait. They remained there until 2005, when the image was replaced with a portrait of Jefferson in three-quarters profile. At first, Jefferson Nichols were produced by the Mint facilities at Philadelphia, Denver, and San Francisco. But in 1965, all nickels came out of Philadelphia. There were no proof nickels that year either. But the Mint did produce special strikes coins that could be purchased alongside other denominations in special mint sets. These too were struck in Philadelphia. Jefferson nickels are still being struck to this day. The portrait used for today's versions is by Jamie Frankie. Coin collectors call the head side of a coin its obverse. The obverse of the 1965 nickel has the portrait of Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson was one of the founding fathers and president of the USA from 1801 to 1809. The Mint ran a competition to seek designs for the coin. The winner was a German artist called Felix Schlag. His portrait depicts Jefferson in profile, facing to the left as the coin is viewed, and wearing a slight smile. Schlag's Jefferson looks very similar to a bust of the former president by the French artist Jean-Antoine Houdon. You can take a look at the original sculpture if you visit the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. To the left of the portrait is inscribed the motto, In God We Trust. The words curve to run parallel to the edge of the coin, facing Jefferson. To the right of the portrait is the word liberty and the date. You won't find any mint marks on 1965 nickels. That's because they were all struck at the Philadelphia Mint Facility which didn't routinely use mint marks until the late 1970s. The most valuable standard 1965 nickels are graded MS-67. The PCGs has certified nine coins at that level and values them each at $2,000. If you want a 1965 nickel with the full step designation, you'll have a smaller choice. Full step coins have been certified only at grades MS-63 to MS-66. At the lower end of that scale, an MS-63 example is valued by the PCGs at $250. That jumps to $2,000 for a coin graded MS-64 and to $10,000 for the sole example graded MS-65.